Today is Network Effects Day. So the idea of the Network Effects Day is to guide you through a couple of trends that we have observed when our society is moving from centralized systems to decentralized systems to fully distributed systems. We're living in the most amazing world of technology, but technology is now also getting a little bit of a bite. Technology is getting nasty. We heard this word disruption, and yesterday, if you were in the plenary, I was reminded of the article that Mark Andreessen wrote a while ago, Software is Eating the World. And yesterday, Gottfried um, talked about that we are being disrupted in the banking industry. I think this is not true. Media has truly been disrupted in the last couple of years. Media is one of those industries that has been redefined as a result of technology. Software has been disrupted. Uh, what you now see is that people can build apps and distribute it in ways that are completely unprecedented than before. Advertising has been disrupted truly as a result of what we see in the world of technology. We see that retail has been disrupted. Amazon is now in a position that is almost um, beyond monopoly situation. But my point is, I think the banking industry today has not been disrupted. But I think yet is the operative word here. Gottfried yesterday was quite cool and calm about financial services disruption. Basically, if you're in the plenary, he said to the thousands of people who were there, we've been talking about disruption for a long time, but we're still here. But I think this is just the beginning. The first point I want to make is I think we are at the end of linear thinking models. And I think that is more important than just the fact that we have new technology hitting us every single time. Today, we're living in a world where everything is connected. And I want to show you this. This is, I'm an engineer, um, and this is the, the first week of engineering school. This is the linear pendulum. And it's the first thing you study when you want to become an engineer. It's simple, it's linear, it's elegant. The equations are very, very simple. And then you unhinge just one hinge, and instead of one element, you now have two elements who act upon each other. And it's the same volume, it's the same mass, it's the same material, but because the forces act on each other, all of a sudden, you get a completely erratic behavior as a result. And I think this is a fundamental shift. It's not about linear models anymore. We're entering the world of nonlinear. And I think this is something that companies still have to figure out how to deal with that. I believe we are at the point where this is actually the brewing of a storm. For many companies, what it means is that their visibility going forward is actually getting smaller and smaller. Many companies have a blurred future because strategy is becoming increasingly fluid in a complete network society. Stanley McChrystal has been a big inspiration for my work. He was the commanding officer of the U.S. Armed Forces in Afghanistan, came into Afghanistan and had one colossal failure after the other when he realized he was trying to use a military command and control structure to fight an enemy that wasn't a structure. The enemy he was trying to fight was a network, which much more nimble and much more agile. He had to turn his organization into a network organization in order to survive and be flexible enough. McChrystal said, it takes a network to fight a network. I believe it takes a network to serve a network. But a, a funny thing happens. How many people have ever climbed mountains or climbed hills? Any, any hill climbers out there? So you get to the top of a ridge, and you notice there's actually a bigger mountain right over the horizon. And that's exactly what's happened. The network effect is actually going to change everything. It's like a super saturated solution of computing. And, it's, and the seed is connectivity. And when that seed hits this, we're going to see a world of change. We are reaching an era of unbounded, malignant complexity. There's almost no other way to explain it. The good news is there's a lot of new stuff happening. This is sort of a blending between atoms and bits. Because it's not only connectivity, it's also digital manufacturing and a whole bunch of other things that are coming around. Your waste is someone else's food. And it turns out this is very much the case. That information is power, and people are going to find ways to use it. So it's not only the network effect, it's that atoms and bits are blending together. So this is just a context. We have all these convergent disruptions. It's not just, not just networking. It's not just information. It's not just digital manufacturing. In completely different industries, but they find the connections and make it work. I think we're living in a world where you need that type of pirate mentality. So let me get back to the question. Can companies reinvent themselves? 
But if you stay frozen for too long, companies become rigid and they die. That's thermodynamics. But if you can keep a cycle going where fluid turns into frozen, that's what's happening at Google. If you go to their search engine people, they're the most rigid command and control people I've ever seen in my entire life. But they have the Google X that makes it work. That is, I think, the trick to reinventing yourself. We're living as Mickey said, in an age of information, banks are at the heart of information. This is the flow of information just coming from mobile. This is four square check-ins in New York from morning till evening. Information is at the heart of how companies and certainly banks have it. But we're now living in a world of information overload. You have too much information. Big data doesn't mean anything if you can't analyze what goes on. Information has become rich, has become visual, but information used to be a pond. Information used to be a lake. You are expert at storing stuff. You're expert at building databases. Databases are prisons of information. You have to see information that flows on the networks as an opportunity. Sure, we have to talk about privacy and security, but we are now all in the information business. Information has started to flow on these networks, and you have to learn to read the language of rivers. Because I believe networks are completely the new way to think about customers, about innovation, about organizations. But you have to learn to understand the flow of information on these networks.